All right, guys, today we're gonna to be taking a look, another look, a kind of five to six month look at the Leatherman arc. Now, a lot of people did initial videos on these. They covered them, they covered the faults, but I really don't see anyone else doing follow-ups on the arc and people have kind of just uh, blown past it. And so I thought I would kind of talk about it, obviously go over my experiences at EDCing it. Now, truth be told, for the past five, six months, I have not uh, always EDC'd the arc and we'll get into the reasons why that is, but we're going to talk about this knife in survival and EDC applications. What I think about it in both of them. Now, first off, when it comes to survival, I this that's probably the biggest reason why I really don't like the arc. It is a nifty um, multi-tool and certainly speaking you know like the saw can be useful of course you have a, a main blade that can be useful but for the most part you know with your file being like a diamond slash um, you know bimetal file and of course having scissors as one of your primaries is kind of eliminate or kind of limits the overall functions of this tool in addition to that too what i found was a lot of times um with this tool because the tools that are not the you know four primary tools were placed outside they kind of limited some of their size overall and they didn't have as much handle to really bury these tools in in addition to i also kind of feel like the overall set for the arc is not the most they really tried to hype this thing up and I, I mentioned this in my initial impressions where you know they really touted this as like I think like a 19 tool multi-tool but you actually look and you know like each side outside of you know your knife and your um, like saw on this side you have a can opener and of course you have your multi-bit compatible screwdriver and then on the other side flipping it around where you have normally your file and your scissors you only have um your normal like kind of flathead screwdriver. You have your um, micro screwdriver, if I can get these guys out. And then of course you have your awl. Now I will say the awl is kind of nice on this one. It's, it's definitely unique. And they chose to put the, um, what is it? The wire, um, God, why am I blanking on the name of this guy? But basically where you set a wire and wire stripper, there we go. <laughs> and you strip off the uh, outer shell of it. They chose to put it on the uh, awl. But yeah, so not a huge fan of the layout of this guy. And like I so said, they really touted it as like being 19 tools. And like one of those tools is like this, you know, like flat hammering surface. Now, to be fair, in an EDC sense, I have used this hammering surface intentionally to try to really put it through its paces. And it does actually work pretty well, especially if you're like, you know, going to, you know, put some screws in something and, you know, you're trying to get it like a uh, particular fitment or alignment you just need to tap something and you don't want to go back to your garage to like go grab a hammer like this i have been in situations where like i was um in installing something on one of my doors and you know i was in my house had the screws um there and the screwdriver there and i was trying to install like i think it was like a plate for one of my doors and it's like i just need the fitment for that little plate to get be right and so instead of like going to the garage to grab the hammer this was already in my pocket so i just pulled this out tapped it into place and so this isn't like a replacement for a hammer certainly but it does actually do the job of you know like some hitting on this and it is nice that it is a flat plate or flat strike surface of hardened steel so it is useful in that regard. So yeah for an EDC perspective at least in my opinion it proved to be pretty good. Now opening it up once again all of the uh, tools on this guy are outside accessible except for of course your pliers and so for the pliers themselves I didn't really have any issue. Now some people did find some issue with the um, wire cutters and certainly I think there was some issue and what I noticed I can't remember if I pointed this out in any of my videos but it is very very hard to see here but just underneath i think what was causing these wire cutters to fail is just underneath hopefully you guys can see there there's just a little bit of an air gap underneath the hardened side of the wire cutters and so i think what was happening is when you're they were cutting um smaller gauged wires what was happening was that uh, gauge of wire as um the wire cutters were going to cut in hopefully you guys can see where this is rounded down here the wire was essentially slipping down because hopefully 
hopefully, like I said, hopefully this comes up on camera, but the area where the hardened wire cutters are is actually smaller than the area underneath the hardened wire cutters. So as those hardened wire cutters come together, um, wire was slipping down, I believe. Obviously I didn't see any exact proof because most people were like, oh no, they'd make the video after they broke these. But I suspect what was happening was the wire was slipping down underneath the wire cutters and putting force um, underneath in where the where the wire cutters were not sharpened so essentially putting pressure down and without the ability to cut through it such that steel wire would just break out the wire cutters so i believe that was um what was happening now my wire cutters haven't been swapped these are still the original ones in here and it's because truth be told i really don't cut a lot of wires in everyday carry. Um, I don't even, you know, always use pliers. I do always prefer to have pliers um, just because when I need them, I need them. But wire cutters are something that I've used probably a handful of times with all my multi-tools. So it's not really a huge issue for me, um, but it is worth noting. So as far as it goes, the tool set overall, I think is pretty generalized and I don't hate it, but I do think my charge and my surge are definitely getting a lot more love when it comes to um, the tool set. Now, the biggest disappointment, as I mentioned in previous videos still, is the blade. Now, when I first made my first impressions, I did make it obvious that I had not put any use on this blade, but I did a lot of cutting with it. And first off, I will say that the hand handle on this thing is very uncomfy. I did not enjoy cutting with this knife at all. And uh, I don't know, this is probably one of their worst knife designs that I've encountered. And I've owned a wide variety of Leathermans from the Surge, Skeletool, the multiple charges, um, a Wave. I own a Super Tool, a Super Tool 300 PST. I own a ton of Leathermans. And so I can say this is probably, with some confidence, I can say this is probably their worst knife design yet. Um, I really dislike it, it's very uncomfy. And then lastly, for me, I just really am still confused as to why Leatherman made this with a thumb stud. I think they were trying to attract, you know, a broader audience of people who maybe don't really know much about multi-tools or whatnot. But as I predicted and found for myself, you know, when cutting through, sitting down cutting through, um, cardboard and paper and all that kind of stuff, this thumb stud gets caught up and just drags. And so you're having to put a lot of extra force with your initial cut. Like once you start a cut into paper or cardboard, especially, um, you know, you start your initial cut and that thumb stud catches and then you have to put some additional force until, you know, you move off of that area of the blade and then carry on. And so for me, I dislike that. I also found that it was kind of an abrupt grind on this guy. So just overall, not a very good cut experience with this one and it's really unfortunate because like I said um, with the charges with the surges with the waves with pretty much every other design of modern Leatherman they use opening holes as opposed to thumb studs even ironically with the free series knives or sorry uh, multi-tools they use an opening hole style and the opening hole is literally there to help prevent snags when you're cutting with the blade so for me it kind of just feels weird because they literally already know they have the solution they've been doing this for decades and they choose to put a thumb stud on this knife and it fails so um, i just it just confuses me utterly now as far as this whole one-handed operation the whole free series thing um, you know it's cool but it is a total gimmick for those who you know, are wondering, um, <clears throat> it's not really worth it, uh, in my opinion, if you're talking about like the whole free thing, like it's cool that this thing, you know, opens and closes kind of like a ballast song, but it's not a ballast song. It never will be. It has pliers on it. So it's cool that it's very smooth. It's cool that you can do this with one hand, but I think like a lot of other Leatherman users have said, if you break in your multi-tools, they really open pretty darn smooth. My generation one surge is not quite this smooth, but just about this smooth. And it really is the same kind of like old school Leatherman way. So, you know, I, I don't really think that this is necessary if you just use your darn tools. Now, aside from that, um, yeah, the free, this knife overall, I guess what I would say is that I definitely think it's hype. I definitely think it is, um, maybe not quite like, uh, 
overhyped, but I definitely don't think that this thing is necessarily worth running out and buying. If you have something, especially one of the higher end multi-tools like a charge, especially if you already have one of the higher end, because when I look at this, I think of like, I guess how I would classify the Leatherman Arc is when you look at the wave, the surge, and then you have the charge, right? Like you look at the first two, the, the surge and the wave, those are kind of like your users, your everyday, your kind of mundane Leathermans that are just your workhorses. And then you have your charge, which is your kind of higher end, nicer, fancier um, version of that. And then I look at the free P2 and the free P4, and then I look at the arc. And I think the arc is to the free series, what the charge is to kind of their normal baseline. And that is that it's not necessarily, you know, reinventing the wheel. Like uh, Leatherman, they kind of tried to hype this up as they should with their marketing team, you know, they kind of tried to hype this up as like the new Leatherman. But realistically, what I would say, if I had to like quantify this, it is like essentially the charge of the free series. And so it's your higher end, more premium line, nicer looking, if you believe that, you know, kind of set up, right? It has the more premium blade steel, but it's still at the core, the same tool. Like once again, the charge uses the same tool set as the wave. It's just a more fancy, slightly smaller, you know, version of the wave. And so that's what I think of the Leatherman Arc. It's not a bad tool at all. And for me, I don't personally regret buying the Arc because I had yet to get into the free series of knives or sorry, multi-tools. So I don't have the free P2 or the P4. So when they said that they were releasing the Arc, I was like, you know, fine, I'll get this version of essentially the free and try it out, play with it. And overall, I will say, to be completely transparent, I do typically go back to my charges, partly because that's what I'm familiar with, but also partly because it has the tool set that I like the most. The tool set with this one, I just don't really love. And about the only thing that I do enjoy from an EDC standpoint is the fact that the scissors are external. But outside of that, really everything else when it comes to the Leatherman tools, um, whether it's the plier head or whether it's the actual tools in the um, multi-tool, I enjoy more with the Leatherman Charge or the Leatherman Wave. So for me personally, I'd say don't get it, but um, different strokes for different folks. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video and the update. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.